So I get the honor of introducing Anne Mervine. Mervine, but Mervin. that's Mervin. But I respond to Mervine, Mervine. Mervin. Founder and, and president of the Mervin and Company mm -hmm. Governmental Relations Consulting Firm. Yes. And you also serve on the board of directors of Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Yes. And she's also, she's got so many things that she's done. She has served with four presidents, I mean governors. Uh, correct. Yeah. <laughs> governors. And she has been the co-director of the bipartisan Michigan Political Leadership Program at Michigan State University. And you have, because you love women in politics, you've gone around the globe and you've trained women in Dubai, Jordan, Morocco, and Cambodia. Yes. It's running for office. And you've won the Wonder Woman Award from the Women's Official Network Foundation in 2013. But today, after all of that, she has time to speak to us about Keep Our Republic, and it's a group of um, elected officials, past and present, and citizens that got together in 2020 to what their goal was to combat the destructive elements perverting our politics. And so that's what we're going to learn about. She is part of Michigan's advisory group to that national group. And Casey has come here with her from Grand Rapids just in this to help her out with that. So welcome Thank you. and we are Thank looking you forward very much. to it. Uh, um, I'm thrilled that Casey Meyer has joined us today. She will be able, uh, she's been involved a little longer than I have, so I'm, I'm, and she's incredibly smart and I'm just really grateful that you made the trip over, Casey. Thank you so much. And uh, first I wanna thank the clerk and many of you who work on the front lines of democracy, of participating um, at your precincts and doing everything that the League of Women Voters is known for. And one of your primary values I know is integrity. And so on behalf of Keep Our Republic, thank you for all you do. You're an integral part of a healthy democracy. So I'm very thankful for all your work. And um, I grew up in a household of divided government. My mother was a Republican, my father was a Democrat, and he frequently get locked out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Election night parties were a little interesting. The Democrats were in the cold basement with bad beer. The Republicans were on the living room floor with wine, appetizers, <laughs> and heat. So that's the household I grew up in. Um, so I've been involved in in engagement in public policy uh, for my entire life. And um, I'm very grateful for the opportunities I've had. As were mentioned, um, I worked with uh, women from Cambodia about running for the Cambodian parliament. Uh, the, my Dubai experience, that was um, actually women from Syria who were not allowed to congregate in Syria. So they came to Dubai and I met with them, I was not, and that was the beginning of Facebook, and who wouldn't want to you know, post photos of women from Dubai learning about democracy? That was not allowed. And when I um, was leaving, I said, well, what goes, what goes on now when you go home to Syria? Well, we'll be detained for a few days and questioned, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, you know, we're used to it. So, um, you know, and so it takes a lot of courage, um, especially um, before then, that was the start of social media. And there's no doubt in my mind that social media has changed um, the way that we have conversations with each other um, about democracy. And so I'm grateful for all of you for your work. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Keep Our Republic. And um, it's an organization that was started in Pennsylvania and we have chapter uh, in Wisconsin and now in Michigan. It's a bipartisan organization of people like myself who have been involved in democracy, have run for office, and uh, many of whom um, I know from a variety of professional um, opportunities I've had to meet with them over the years. So it's a real um, honor to be part of this organization and um, it was started because of uh, the threats to democracy that we face in our own country. And uh, we're a nonprofit that 
uh, coordinates with other organizations to make sure that we can sustain our healthy um, democracy, meaning that people are, like today, are voting um, in an unobtrusive way. And um, the threat to democracy versus, um, you know, because of artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, the ad that was in New Hampshire about President Biden that wasn't President Biden. So how do we address those, those uh, risks to our democracy? So we'll go to the next slide. And so our primary uh, functions are to help educate uh, the American people are, and our leaders on the dangers of unconventional threats. So like about artificial inten um, intelligence. Um, conduct research and analyze proposed risk mitigation strategies for things that might come about, about you know, um, certifying elections. And in Michigan, uh, we saw a lot of, we saw some of that. And, uh, you know, where clerks were threatened um, and, you know, the truth was challenged. And so we'll be performing trainings and educational sessions like this around the state to raise awareness and how people can get engaged to sustain our democracy in a safe way. Um, so it's a... Uh, a very um, forward-looking organization, and it's in response to the things that happened in the last election. And so we'll go to the next slide. Um, so we will be, um, we've held uh, seminars, like uh, Goa Devi from the um, Secretary of State's office, he's on the far right. Um, he is going around the state with the Secretary and with the Secretary of State and without the Secretary of State on his own, educating the public on, on voting rights. And um, especially with uh, the new law that allows early voting um, and other changes. So a lot of people aren't aware of those new opportunities and new safeguards. And I'm thrilled to have the clerk here. You know, you and your colleagues around the state and your staffs are on that front line. So thank you very much for your service. You. Thankfully today, people are coming in voting in a safe environment. So we're, we're thankful to see that. So that's great. Um, I just want to, and then in our final slide, you'll see, oh, the AI. Um, it's, it's really, I was on a, our, a webinar on um, artificial intelligence um, the other day, and it took us 30 years to have the internet fully integrated into our digital lives, it's going to take 10 years, just 10 years, for AI to have made significant changes in our work life, our social life, and life in general. I've been, uh, was on a, on a webinar this last week collaborating with other people on some bylaw changes for a nonprofit that I'm involved with. And they started with ChatGBT as our starting document. And I'm like, wait, you know, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> um, so it's, it's already happening. So um, I'd like to then just talk a little bit about how we're getting engaged. Uh, people, volunteers like myself, are going around the state and presenting on panels, being, participating in panels. And you know, we can share this information with you. So if you have family or if you yourself want to attend, um, like the Wayne State University event on March 15th, um, if you have people that you know in Grand Rapids or Cooley that you'd like to have participate or in the UP with Houghton. And um, also as a Detroit Chamber member, I will be asking the Chamber to please engage as part of this Chamber of Commerce tour. Um, because these are business leaders and public servants in their own way. A lot of volunteers like me who serve on chamber boards or, you know, who can help educate um, our uh, individuals about the threat um, to our democracy through AI and other um, threats. So, Casey, is there anything you want to add? So I will say, and I'm also very grateful to have you here, Clerk, um, part of and hearing what you're saying. So 
one of the things we did when we launched in Michigan back in December, so we're, we're fairly new to the state um, here, but we gathered about 60 clerks. Most of them were from um, surrounding Grand Rapids West Side area, but we did have some folks make the journey from across the state. But they came together um, in this room at the Gerald R. Ford Museum, and they were able to express, um, it was kind of a, a, a an airing of grievances almost at first, um, but to bring them together and hear what each clerk is experiencing and how things like Proposal 2, what challenges they're facing and how and um, how they're handling going forward and communicating with their um, communities on the different changes is has been really grateful. So because there are so many clerks who don't have maybe as much collaboration and are kind of on their own and so to hear maybe it's not such an overwhelming undertaking for these changes that need to be implemented and like a learning experience for them um, and then from there, and you'll probably hear from me soon, is um, helping clerks go into their own communities and educate the community on this is how the election is run in, in our community and really helping to raise the curtain on what is often a very, you know, if, if you're not in it, like many of you are, um, you, you're like, oh, well, I just show up and, you know, and then away it goes. Um, so raising that curtain and helping to say this is how the elections are run and this is how you can have confidence that your vote matters. So um, just a lot of education. That's One great. One of the messages that we work to really get out to them too is the best way for someone to feel reassured is to work an election. Yes, mm -hmm. now, that's a great one. I tell message. you that many have yep. taken us up on it, not always, but I think the people who do and find out all the checks and balances in place I mean, after every training, I asked, you know, for who's new, how many of you realized how much went into this? They're all like, no idea. Mm -hmm. And then when they find out, tell them, this isn't new, this has been going on forever, they don't realize it. So they're hearing a sound bite, and they're basing their opinion on that sound bite, mm -hmm. and, and instead of the, the knowledge. And I tell my people all the time, including in training, you need to get your information from an election official, not TikTok. You know, and, and that's really the important thing is, mm -hmm. is, is getting, I make myself available and I know all of my clerk colleagues do as well. Mm -hmm. I, somebody doesn't have to be my constituent. I'd rather that everyone's getting the accurate information. So if anybody calls me, I'm going to explain it to them or, and invite them through to see the life of an absentee ballot or mm -hmm. to, to see the process and let them connect. You know, hopefully they'll work an election because nothing educates like working an election. Mm -hmm. so. yep. As a, as a former county commissioner in Ingham County, I know the, and that was quite a while ago, the challenges of being a candidate. So I applaud anybody who's run for office at any level. And um, thank you for supporting our democracy in that really important way. So that concludes my, my formal presentation. And I uh, look forward to talking to you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Thank you. <laughs>